they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clearing the. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you are tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview, and we have a very special guest today. Who we got in the building? What do do? Drink guy. I swear, Vezo. Yes, I swear, Vezo. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're so happy to have you. So, uh, um, Before we get into it, we're going to do a quick round of rapid fire questions, just as a little icebreaker so we can get to know you a little yeah. bit more. All right? Ready? Yeah, let's get it. All right. Favorite color? Blue. Best fast food restaurant? Uh, Raising Cane. Oh, and they just opened one I in, in yeah. New York. Um, three words to describe your city. Which city? Oh, that's a good question because you have um Detroit. Detroit, uh, gangster, my fucking turned up, we trendy. All right, a song that's attached to one of your favorite memories. Uh, my favorite. I have to say one of my songs, Money Phone. Money phone? Yeah. Okay. That's, just real quick, that's one of the songs that, like, your real fans, they always yeah. say, like, people be like, oh, you're not a real I swear Vessel fan if you don't know Money, Money phone. phone. Money yeah. phone. That's what they always say. Okay. A celebrity you would let play you in a movie? Let play me a celebrity. Damn, that's a good one. Mm. I don't know nobody that look like me, though. They don't have to look like you. They ain't got to look like me. Like, maybe they could have the same swag, the same, like, move the similarly. Look. Yeah. I think Lil Meats. Lil Meats? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, for sure. Unpopular opinion. Huh? Unpopular opinion. Just overall? Mm hmm. Unpopular opinion. Damn. You give me one. Give me an example. Hmm. Um, I believe in gender roles. <laughs> I think that um, men and women, while we should have equal rights, men definitely have responsibilities that they should play in the household. I, I'm with you on that. I believe a man should take care of the household. I think now we're in a time where everybody wants everything across the board to be 50-50. Nah, I'm old school. I'm with that. I feel you on that. That's my unpopular opinion. No, you can't take mine. No, I, <laughs> How are you going to ask me because, for an example nah, that's, and then that's use cool, it? That's cool, though. But ours on a different side. You, you saying, so you saying you don't think women should do nothing either? I never said that. I think that women definitely should contribute to the household, but I think a lot of men think that when women say that we should be equal, it's across the board. Like, I think that men should change tires. I think that they should provide for the household. I don't think that if I'm living with a man and we're married that I need to be going 50-50 on the rent. I believe that, like, I can take care of the household. I'm keeping up with everything that's there. there I'm making sure the family is straight. But there are responsibilities that, that I feel like a man should take care though. of. I think that is 50-50. But you have people... So, like, Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, for example, she was saying they go 50-50. They money different, though. So, it's like she got... But I feel like money and gender... Dog shit just sitting in the bank. It's just like, shit, let's just spend that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think I think if she ain't had the type of paper that she got... It wouldn't be like that. I think he'd be holding it down. Maybe. I but I think it. that if we both got it, why not do it as the man? Maybe it's like an empowerment thing to him. She might not mind. I think I think she's just not petty. It's like, shit, this You think it's petty? I think it's petty. I think if a woman got... I think it's only petty if got, you're actually counting it as no, like... No, like, for instance, right? So, say if I'm up 10 million. My old lady, she come in, she only got a, a dollar, a million dollars or something, right? Mm -hmm. Then, all right, all is well. I got it. I'm going to hold it down. Mm -hmm. But if I'm up a dub or a dime or something like that, and my old lady, she up a dub and a dime the same way, let's just spin this shit. Like, it's all, let's just spin this shit. I think it's petty not to. But I also think it's petty if you got way more paper than your old lady to make her put in on it. Absolutely. I think that's petty. Maybe that's a, a missing component. I don't know how much they both have. So yeah. I'm just going based on speculation what I'm seeing. Shorty got some cake. She, oh, well, I know that. <laughs> I, 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 I know that. My girl, Gabrielle, she be putting in that work. So, all right. But but wait, hold on. Because you still didn't tell me your unpopular opinion. We over here having a whole side conversation. Don't think you're escaping it. <laughs> <laughs> Like I disagree. Yeah, I was oh, about to say go, strip clubs my, got no, the best chicken wings. Got the best, strip clubs got the best food, period. Strip club, I haven't had food outside of chicken wings in a strip club, but I in, can in, vouch. Like, for sure, in Detroit, the strip clubs got the best food. 
We're like, like across the board. Across the board. What should we gain from the strip club to eat? They got everything in that motherfucker. Baked, but like uh, the, you know the the Alfredo potatoes and shit. But like the that. Alfredo. Shit, okay, so fine. my whole thing is like, I feel like wings is a quick little finger food. You know, you got the dancers. They come around. You could do a little boom. You could eat a little wing right. on the side. How are you about to eat a whole load of baked potato Yo, and throw your money? And like, like that's that. a lot of multitasking. Nah, see, when you when we at the strip club, we get our shit to go. Yeah, that's all I was gonna say. We take it home. Down eating, we taking that shit home. Oh, see me, I be hungry, so they maybe come, that's why that's the they only come thing I got. Full, full course meals at our strip club. They got some shit, seafood platters, all kind of shit. Damn, I gotta, I gotta go out set. to Detroit. I said that when Skiller Baby was here too. Like, definitely gotta make a trip to Detroit. All right, so yeah. you stole another unpopular opinion, but it's okay. I'm gonna let you rock. <laughs> um, a word that you use often. A word that I use often. Uh, See where I'm from. We always say we say shit after everything. Mm. It's just how we oh, on the flow. It's on the flow. On the flow. I say that all the time about any scenario. And hmm. if you're from Detroit, you know exactly which way I'm using it, depending on what the conversation like. See, That's like, interesting. On, it's on the flow. That mo- that motherfucker like universal. It can mean anything. If it's like you see your ops or anything, it's mm-hmm. like yeah, it's on the flow. You know what I'm saying? Or if it's time to go, it's like man, it's on the flow. Or it's like shit, we about to turn up. It's like man, it's on the flow. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or if you got the, or, or if you got, or if you got some shit on, you got that shit on, you dress, you, you looking right, that, that shit looking good. It's like, yeah, it's on the flow. Nah, yeah. I'm weak, so it's very much a context clue situation. Yeah, I say that shit all the time. So, and we all, we all say shit, but we say it, it's how we say it, like shit mm-hmm. about every, that. <laughs> if you hear a Detroit person saying that, just know they 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 laughing at you and they saying some sucker shit. About nah, yeah. I, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> um, so put it on. Uh, you said on the floor. Is that? You're saying that's from Detroit, or are you saying that that's just something y'all say? Without a doubt. I ain't going to just say Detroit. It's from Michigan, period, because Flint folks say it all the time, too. Okay. They say it's on the flow. Everybody in Detroit and just Michigan overall, we all say that. So, We've been saying that for years, too. That's interesting, because I didn't know. So how do you feel now that, like, you know, we got Put It On The Floor. It's a big song right now. Do people doing remixes, incorporating that in their lingo? I think it's two different uh, bags. I think, like, Put okay. It On The Floor. I don't think she mean, like, that on mean, the floor. it's on the floor. Okay. Like, it, ours is It's On The Floor, not Put It On The Floor. No, I know. Yeah. But I didn't. Okay. Yeah, All right. it's a different thing. Um, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> if you put together, if you were to put together a safe with three rap, do you smoke? No, I don't you don't. Smoke. Okay, I was looking at through your pictures. Like you don't have no pictures. Like smoking. Usually artists be like in the studio smoking. I, used so to I wasn't smoke sure. Shit like cigarettes. I stopped smoking. All right. So you okay? Let's say. Okay, let's say a scythe, not a smoking scythe, but a rapping scythe. Yeah. You had to put together a scythe with three other artists. Who do you think would go well in a scythe with you? And talk that shit. Mm-hmm. I have to say, Rio, Crispy Life Kid. And RMC Mike. Hmm. For sure. They okay. That shit. Shout out to them. Favorite cologne? Baccarat. Period. Uh, black, owned, uh, black owned business. Fresh and pressed juices. Okay. And to wrap it up, 2023 so far in one word. Fast than a motherfucker. Fast. <laughs> Fast. Quick. <laughs> Okay, that's a that's a good one. I mean, I say this all the time. Time is definitely illusion. I can't believe yeah. we're already this like shit is near going July. by. Like this shit going. We're halfway through the year already. Yeah, literally. So okay, you said it's been fast. So how like if you had to do a half of the year wrap up like so far, what have been your takeaways from the year so far? Like how's it been going? I just been cooling for real. I've been uh, th- this year. I noticed that I ain't been like rushing to do too much shit. I just been letting everything play out. I ain't been forcing absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm proud of myself for that. You know what I'm saying? I've been kind of just coasting. Like it flow. is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you're clearly here in New York. Yeah, so glad to have you. How's your time been here so far? I fuck with New York. Y'all motherfuckers be outside though. Like outside. Yeah, you came outside, in the summer though. Outside. Listen, we extra outside. Yeah, you said you fuck with New York. New York. Way, what are your like top five cities? Because I'm sure you be going around. What's like the top five cities that you've been to or that you really like fuck with? I fuck with Miami the long way. I fuck with Miami or uh, okay. Atlanta. Miami is sure. a Bob. Houston. And shit, New York and Chicago. Okay, the hot uh, spots. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been to Chicago yet, but I really do want to go. I'm so. right. Okay, so recently, um, the BET Awards, you know, mm-hmm. just came. Did you go? 
No, I had a uh, event to do that day. Okay, did you watch? Uh, no, but I could. We had a picnic in my hood that we have every year called the Six Nick. Uh huh. Yeah, so I was doing that shit during the BT World. Well, we're definitely gonna get into that. I seen a bunch of the highlights though. Like the shit was turnt this year. I we're guess. definitely gonna get into what you were doing on yeah. that day. But um, with the BT Awards, yeah, there were a lot of highlights. I feel like one that definitely stuck out to me, of course, was the Migos tribute. Yeah, that was hard. Um, to take that was very. It was good to see them come together, and it was for also sure. just. I feel like a moment for everybody to really remember the impact that Absolutely, he had. Yeah. Um, and I know he had an impact not only on us as consumers, but you as an individual. Yeah, that was really my homeboy, like, in real life. He was the first big artist to, like, you know what I'm saying, fuck with me just overall, pull up to my hood and show love, just period, you know what I'm saying? Gave me game about all this shit, like... That was really my homeboy, like in real life. That was my friend. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think it's always important as an upcoming artist to have that support from someone who is considered to be a big name Stabbed because it just, shit. you know, it helps you believe in your mission just in Absolutely. case you have any shadows without. Right. Um, how important do you think that is to have somebody co sign you who already has a name like that? I think a co sign always count, you know what I'm saying? But for me, with, with uh, bro, it wasn't necessarily. A cosign, it was just a game, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And just like you say, most important thing was just showing me like, damn, I must be doing something right. right. You know what I mean? Keep going. It was just that motivation to let me know it's, it's going to work, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's extremely important. It helped a lot of artists. Any artist that get that, you know, every artist can tell you. Anytime mm-hmm. they do get that, that shit just, it, it just motivated and it, re, it revamped that dream and it keep that hope. Mm-hmm. Right where it need to be Because it's like Yeah I got it This shit gonna happen Right And it's definitely like A full circle moment also Because now you're signed To QC yeah. And also I mean You are in a position Where you can now You know Encourage people Who are coming right. up as well And give them That same kind of Confidence Absolutely. boost Or even reassurance About where they're going With their careers Who are like Some artists right now That you feel like You are like Backing and in support of that are like up and coming? Uh, for sure, Crispy Life Kid from Flint. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's another young dude named Jungle. He from Detroit. Like, he he going crazy, turning up heavy right now. Um, who else? Chucky, you know what I'm saying? Uh, man, it's a, it's a lot of guys. I, I tap in with everybody. I make sure every time somebody, like, on the come up in Detroit, I reach out, give them verses, videos, whatever it is. Like, mm-hmm. I make sure I try to do my part. So you're still doing it because I heard and want well I heard you say in one of your interviews that you were giving out like free verses. Mm-hmm. Um and I thought that that was really dope because a lot of people they want verses from people that they may listen to on a daily day day to day basis, but they can't afford it. So how do you determine like who you want to give a verse to versus like who you would charge or like how does that situation go? It's more so like you ever you ever cut you ever heard of somebody before you actually heard them? Mm-hmm. It be situations like that where like the young homies keep telling me about certain niggas and then it's just like yeah it makes sense let me you know what I'm saying homes on his way let me play my part to kind of push him over that edge as right. far as in Detroit you know what I'm saying right and that's how I play it for real okay yeah. um now I don't th- take money from niggas who I know ain't really got it too I don't like that like I done had mm-hmm. people try to spend their money and pay pay for features with me and shit. But I, I just knew they ain't, you know, they was spending their last or they ain't have it. Or mm-hmm. They saved up. I, I don't even, I don't, I'd be feeling crazy doing Were that. Were you ever in a situation like that where you had to spend your last for a feature? I always getting money, I ain't. Oh, period. <laughs> I forgot who I'm talking to. My bad. <laughs> Not even trying to play, though. I'm, I'm for real, though. Like, respectfully, I've been getting money for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's let's talk about it. You <laughs> have been getting money for a long time. Um I know that, well, let me not say I know, but I think that I know that at a young age, you had bought a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me about that a little bit, because not only did you buy a restaurant, but there were some things that was going down in that restaurant. Yeah, that shit was just so, crazy. So, let's talk about it. So, how old were you when, when you bought your restaurant? I was 24 when I grabbed it. Yeah, I had a restaurant, a dispensary, and a car wash. They was all in the same block. My restaurant and my car wash was next door to each other. But well, them shits kept getting raided, so mm. I had to shut them down after about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. 
it, yeah, about a year and a half. It definitely gives. I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman because yeah. you have a lot of things going on. Yeah. I didn't realize that it was that late in the game though, because you have mm-hmm. some stuff that predates mm-hmm. that that I definitely want to get into too. So we're gonna rewind it back a little bit. Um, growing up in Detroit, um, what is your first music memory? Like, at what point did you realize that music was something that you wanted to get into? I I knew I wanted to rap since I was a shorty. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just just looking at the like guys like the Street Lords and Blade Icewood and all them, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I idolized that type of shit. Like I, I love at when I was a kid, I love like jewelry and cars and just being one of them niggas. Like I, I, the I lifestyle. wanted that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I knew that's what I was gonna do. So I know that you were born in Minnesota, moved yeah. to Detroit. How old were you when you moved? So we first moved when I was six months. Okay. Then we moved back to, we. Uh, so I was born, then after six months, we came to Detroit. Then when I turned two years old, we went back okay. to Minneapolis. Then when I was in third grade, I believe, we went, we came back to Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you basically were raised in yeah. Detroit. How long do you feel like a person should live in a city before they, they're considered to be like an artist from this city? I ain't gonna lie. I think you gotta be raised in that city to consider yourself an artist from that city. Mm. Cause you a motherfucker can move to a city when they nineteen and or sixteen and stay there for ten years and mm-hmm. now they twenty six. I still think they technically not from that city. That's just how I think. You know. Yeah, I think. I it's- feel like wherever you was raised at, where you where you fell and bumped your head, where you grew up at, where you aged at and mm-hmm. learned your mistakes at, got your first. Piece of yet, all that type of shit. I caught my first case. I got my first piece of pussy, all that. In Detroit, mm-hmm. I was literally raised there. You know what I'm saying? I never lived nowhere else in mm-hmm. my life. So I think that's important. I, me personally, if I live in a city for even 15 years, I wouldn't claim that city. Really? I would. I think it depends on the age. Because yeah, I know depending you said on the age, 16. Depending on the age. I still feel like 16. Let's say you have like a 30-year-old. Like, I know you're in your 30s right mm-hmm. now. So, like, if you, let's say, moved to Detroit when you were like 14, 15. I think that's too late. You think that's too late? That's too late. That's too late. I wouldn't, I wouldn't I do mean, it. I wouldn't claim it. You on that because yeah. even when it comes to like Murder B, she's a New York artist, yeah. and there's like a debate about where she's from, how long she's been living there. Like people tend to bring that up a lot, um and she's like, I, it was only for a few years. So you gotta just- think how impactful your childhood is on you. Period. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Your childhood is that that shit is what shape you and what define you as an adult. Mm-hmm. That shit is extreme. It, it, it's important. You know right. what I'm saying? So like. Wherever your childhood memories is, is, that's where you from to me. You know, I think if a motherfucker like five years old, then yeah, they respectfully they can claim that city. Mm-hmm. But if you pass 12 and 13, like like you say, 14, 15 years old, and you say you start rapping at the age of 25, you not from that. You from where the <laughs> hell you live at from the age of one to 14. Okay, does it does it change if you started rapping at 14, 15? Cause you're still That's, very that impressionable. Might be different. You're right. You're, st- yeah, you're it's very still impress- a very impressionable, a, a, a yeah. very impressionable age. You're still kind of working on your I'll craft, give you that. building. I'll give them you know, that. they can have that. I give them so okay, yeah. it's 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 situational. Situational. We'll we'll there leave it at it's situational. For but sure. something that you said was your childhood is very important. The way that you grow up. I know that you also before you became solo, you were part of Green Guys rap group with your family. Was it? No, nah, uh, Green Guys was a group. Um, was like my family. They had their little thing going mm-hmm. on, and we just started kind of repping it in Detroit. And then we became a rap group. Uh, it was Peasy, Babyface Ray, GT, Dame Dot, Lil Perry, and rest in peace, Team Eastside Snoop. They was all a rap group called Team Eastside and mm-hmm. GT. And then I, I joined that. I joined that group. And, and how how old were you at that point? We were shorties. We was like probably like nineteen, twenty, shit like that. One thing I will say is, it seems like there are a lot of relationships in Detroit that go beyond just like the music. Like it's like That's I really fact. grew up with these niggas. Like I really know them outside of the songs That's that we on we together. That's how it is. And you know you 
Peasy and Babyface Ray give me that because there's only a few tapes, a few projects yeah. that they don't make it on. One thing yeah. about Ice Red Bezo, he's going to put Babyface Ray that's and Peasy on a track. And I think that that's so dope that you have those lasting relationships with mm -hmm. them. Um, so how would you say like the Detroit music culture is now in comparison to how it was when you first started making music? I think we super turned. I think we're doing an amazing job right now. Mm -hmm. When I first started, we ain't had this type of recognition like worldwide. Like, nobody understood our music because our music didn't change. The same shit that we put out now, mm -hmm. that's the, it's the same way our shit been sounding. Ain't nothing changed about the music. But motherfuckers didn't understand it. I remember probably like 2014, I came to New York and the biggest song in Detroit at the time was a song I had called Dancing and Got It All On Me. It was two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this shit was super huge on the radio all day, every day. It wasn't no car driving in no hood that wasn't playing this whole project. It was clearly too. Mm -hmm. We brought that shit to New York and was playing it for the DJ. They was sitting there like, they wasn't jacking what it. the fuck is this? Like, it just was trash to them. You know what I'm saying? But now they understand that same sound that they didn't like. So that happens though. Yeah. A lot of music, I feel like when it's native to like the city that it's from, a lot of times it's not really as transferable yeah. as it would be. Like I feel that way right now. I'm starting to like transfer into appreciating it a little bit more, but go go music. Yeah. People from the DMV love go go music. I I haven't been able to really like get myself into it that much, yeah. but I know like if you're from there, it's like fire. Like yeah, it hits a sure. different part of your soul. But what do you think it takes for a song to go across different cities and kind of like connect with people that aren't familiar with the sound? I mean, right now that's easy. It's social media. Mm. It's just simple as that. Social media is what played the part in us being able to brand our way. Mm -hmm. It's social media. That's it. I think. I think people. You know, outside of the, the few people that I did was playing the shit for. You never know. People probably would have been fucked with it if they just had a chance to hear it. Right. They just didn't have a chance to hear it. Now they got a chance to hear it and see it. You mm. know. So social media changed everything for us. So how do you feel about? People, because I think that I think the same. I think that even when it comes to music outside of the Detroit music, when people see something on social media is trending, or a lot of people are kind of like gearing towards a specific type of sound, they'll try to mimic it or try to hop on it because yeah. they know that it's popular. Have you noticed any artists picking up that Detroit sound? Yeah, you know I noticed it. Everybody noticed <laughs> I mean, I noticed it too. I, so, well, how do you how do you feel about that? It is what it is. I appreciate this shit. They helping us turn the sign up. Do they, you? I look at it like they getting more people to accept it. So yeah, that's a win. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a win. Do you feel like they're doing it justice? Yeah, they are for sure, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Cause now when we do it, it's gonna be more acceptable. You know, faster mm -hmm. and. I think as long as motherfuckers know where the sound come from, it'll do us just. But if don't nobody know where the sound come from, then it might hurt us because you got people that'll be like, oh, they cop, they trying to copy such and such. Mm -hmm. This such and such sound, they don't know these folks got this shit from us. Well, I think the good thing about Detroit music specifically is no, the, the Detroit. Yeah, I was about to say y'all yeah. on the map and y'all like doing what needs to be done right now. So like the focus is on y'all. So whatever comes that shit been from official. that. It's like, beneficial for sure, yeah. without a doubt. Okay, that's that's dope. So, um, I one thing about you that I really admire is how involved you are in your community. Um, not only when it comes to like incorporating your neighborhood and like your music mm -hmm. videos and stuff like that, but also just giving back in general. Um, and I know we just talked about BT Awards Day. Yeah. You had something, was that what, the 23rd? Yeah, yeah. Um, the 25th. You, the 25th. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. You had something going on. Talk to us a little bit about that and also the importance of doing stuff like that in your community. Well, we had the sick Nick, the six Nick going on that day. Mm -hmm. We do this every single summer for the last 25 years it's been going on. This is my second summer actually Paying and paying for it myself, type shit. So you know what I'm saying. We uh, but we separated. So like the 25th, we did it for the shorties, and then we gonna have another one for the for the grown ups later mm -hmm. on down before the summer end. And we gave away free clothes, free shoes. We had rides. We had a bunch of special guests pop out. You know what I'm saying. All that shit. I just think it's important that kids be able to see niggas that's from the same hood as them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Make it out, get some money, do this shit the right way, do it legally, mm -hmm. and still be able to 
see them and, and touch us, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just be able to feel our energy overall, you know what I mean? I think that's important. I think that's going to help and inspire them as well to want to do the same shit. So, yeah. I I think that that's dope. I also think that reminds me of, um, I was watching Lil Baby's documentary and there was a part where they said Thug had offered to pay him whatever it was that he was making on the streets just so that he could get off of it and work on his craft mm -hmm. and focus because he saw the potential in him. Yeah. So I really, I really like, you know, when people take that responsibility to show the youth like there are other options, you can still get to it, yeah. but just, you know, make sure you're mindful of the way that you're doing that. Um, but in the vein of your neighborhood and like just the things that you do for your community, I know that you have a project coming out based on yeah. the way that you grew up and based on, Absolutely. you know, what was going on. Talk to us a little bit about that. Let us know what the name is and what the inspiration behind that project is. It's called Live from the Six, you know, so I'm basically just bringing the whole nation into six mile i'm letting them see how we rock you know what i'm saying here hear how we think you know all the way down to the slang we use to the way we look at shit and all just overall you know what i'm saying i, I just want to bring the whole world to my hood mm. verbally and in terms of like the vibes that we can be getting from this project what would you say if you had to use about like three words to describe what the feeling of the project will give you what would you use i think it's you know it's just real you know it's gritty and it's original mm -hmm. okay I, any features that you could no, i ain't put no features on. no features wow yeah, okay thug it out i got a gang of features too just sitting but i just want to do some shit by myself this time and give myself a chance i respect to that pop my shit you know and I mean? it's your story to tell it's too. It's my story, so and that it's makes about sense. my hood. It ain't from there, right? So, so I, I know our time here is very <laughs> short, and I know you have to get ready to go. But I have to ask you. I know that now you do have a deal with QC, yeah. um, and you have a song with Baby already. Now, are there any other QC artists that you would either like to work with, or you have something that you've worked with already in the tub? We all work together already. You know what I'm saying? We got okay. shit that just ain't. We, me and Baby even got music that ain't came out yet. Me and Yachty got shit that ain't dropped yet. You, know you said what I'm saying? all. Yeah. Carisha, JT. I, I want to work with them. We're going to work oh, together. Okay. Right. Let me find yeah, out you know, got my girls in the we tuck. Just, we just thugging, that. though. You know, everybody over there doing their thing. Mm -hmm. I do know it's all respect all around the board with everybody from the artists to A&Rs to the people behind the scenes to the CEOs. It's just it's just respect, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. A, it's a family over there. All right. And now, you know, you have to come back. We're going to do an air pinky promise yeah. that the next time that you come to New York, we're going to do a part we two so that we can in. really get, get it. into it. Let's turn but this before up. we really wrap it up, I have one more game that I want to play with you. Mm -hmm. um, you dropped a song with Jeezy last December yeah. one time. Yeah. Um, really liked it. 2.5 million views on YouTube. Okay. Y'all really ran it up. It was really good. But I want to ask you about the one time. You just got to give me one time that certain things happen in your life. Okay. All right. All right. One time a fan made you smile. I just smiled at my um, concert in oh, Minneapolis. Okay. I thought you were about to say, I just smiled. Like, okay. Um, one time someone in the industry had you all the way fucked up. That's more than one time. But I just have... one time. The first that comes to your mind. Oh, man. I ain't even going to say home's name. One time, I was at the radio station, right? Uh-huh. And I was coming to do some whole other shit. And my man was a DJ. He was he was interviewing an a artist, a, a national artist at the time. Uh-huh. I didn't know this artist was down there. I was literally meeting somebody in a camp to, you know, do some other shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I walked in the studio part, and the nigga literally said, Oh, I just want everybody to know I ain't taking no pictures and I ain't trying to listen to nobody music because I ain't signing nobody right now. And I looked around. Uh -uh. And I'm like, who, who he talking to? And you he like, I ain't talking to nobody. I'm like, I, I don't think I don't give a fuck about you, my nigga. I ain't here mm. for that. Yeah, I don't He like a big that. artist and I don't want to. It's he another a time where another artist, a little girl draw, drew him a picture, right? Drew him a picture. And she tried to give him the picture, and he said he wasn't taking any gifts. And that shit had me mad. Not for a little girl. Like, yeah. that, see, I feel like, you know, obviously, I don't know what, but, what it's But at like. the end of the day, you don't, you know, just thinking, thinking where I'm at now, like, it's just like, you don't know what yeah. the situation was, but. 
That, but I mean, it's a little but that first situation had me fucked up all the way. Yeah. All right. One more, cause I'm getting the evil eye. All right. One time you felt accomplished. One time I felt accomplished. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel accomplished every time my mama smile and tell me she loved me. Love I mean, that. she proud of me. I always feel accomplished. I mean, and when she told you she loved you too. Yeah, for sure. There's Absolutely. nothing wrong with that. She been loving me though. <laughs> okay, so now I know you have a lot of things coming. I saw you posted with Felicia Rashad that yeah. y'all have something coming out. I swear, Vezo getting into his Jumping actor in that bag. Acting bag. You yeah, know what I'm saying? we love All to that. see you the heard. versatility. Yeah. Like I said, I got movies out though. No, I, listen, I know. You fuck I with know. Me. Tubi, Amazon Prime. I know. See, I fuck with her. Y'all hear? We she a real one. We made our pinky promise, y'all. A real so, one. So, like I said, we can we not really even getting into it because well, one thing about me, we we, we we gonna get into it. But yeah. let us know what we can expect from you, just like coming up, so that we can stay posted. Obviously, we have the project coming up. Mm-hmm. What else? More movies. I'm jumping that More bag, movies. like real. You know what I'm saying? We got. I'm shoot. I'm filming a new movie in September. You heard tag the movie out right now. Mm-hmm. Price of Love out right now. But I'm fucking with the movies and them TV shows. We on that. We on everything. I'm on everything. I'm, I'm catching me a hundred M's this year, for I know sure. That's right. I'm still gonna make me a hundred and big ice. Kids. We coming. All right. Well, listen. Let the people know where to find you. Until the next time. I swear. Underscore Vezo on all social media platforms. Follow me right now. Stay in tune. Right. We now. on everything moving. You heard. Yes. Big and- ice. Thank you so much again for coming. It was so good speaking to you. And until next time, bye, y'all. Appreciate it.